Hello everyone, this is Gail. I am back with another tutorial. It seems like my little creative block and taking my break really helped. I not only got some great ideas from you guys, but once I started thinking about the different things I could do, it just led to something else, which led to something else. So now I have quite a list of things that I want to do videos on. So taking that little break and making my Christmas tile picture frame really helped. I'm just straightening up here so I can get some stability. I know there's going to be a glare and I apologize for that. But you know, I told you back when I first started doing this that I had lots of old canes and I wanted to use them up. So that's what started me, make, you know, with some of the uh, things that I had done in my early, in my early YouTube life, which was only three, four months ago. Do you realize I didn't start doing videos until May the 19th? On May the 19th of this year, which is 2016, I posted a video showing the box that I made my daughter-in-law that is battling breast cancer. And I, it wasn't even a project. It was just showing you uh, the box and what I had done with it. And that was on May the 19th. And here it is, September the 13th. And... I have over 1,600 subscribers. It just blows my mind. I can't believe it. I'll be at 2,000 before you know it. So maybe I need to start planning my 2,000 subby giveaway. Probably won't be as spectacular as the 1,000 subby giveaway. But anyway, I have used up most all of my old canes. Well, I say that, and I haven't really. I've used a lot of them. But I had these blends... You know, this one is a darker blend, a dark red. This, I'm sure I mixed this. And these are all Kato clay. This one is more of a little swirl. It's not so much a Skinner blend plug, but I can, it can be used the same way. And some, one of the ideas that I had was um, going back to the beginning when I started showing you a basic flower cane. And I realized I showed you the basic cane, but I never showed you anything else other than making the Skinner Blend plug and making little flowers out of that. So I'm going to show you another method today. And this again, not only is this Kato clay, but this is the old formula Kato clay. It's probably... 10 to 12 years old and you'll, you're going to see that it's still going to work. Everybody talks about Kato clay and how hard it is to condition. But if you just follow the simple instructions that Donna herself has given you, when you take your clay, slice your clay, you know, with your blade, slice your clay into uh, maybe eighth of an inch slices Roll it with your roller before you put it in your pasta machine. How many of you have cut clay straight from a package and stuck it in the pasta machine and it turned to crumbles? You know, that's because the clay is not conditioned any at all. So if you just, just roll over it, uh, I don't have any right here. Well, I have this old cane end. Spoiler alert. But, you know, just roll it just a little bit like that, just to flatten it out a little bit. You'll tell a difference in the way that it feels. You don't have to work it much. Just roll over it once or twice. Just You'll see where when you slice, a, uh, especially a firm clay like Kato, when you slice it, it's going to have this little uh, frosty or whitish look to the clay on the inside. When you roll it with this, the roller, it goes away, and then you can roll it through your pasta machine and it doesn't crumble. So just, you know, be patient. If you want to try Kato, don't be afraid of it. If you want to stick with Primo, that's fine. Primo's a great clay, and I use a lot of it. But uh, I'm trying to use up some of my old Kato so I can get some new Kato. I just haven't justified buying any new clay when I've got so much of the old clay left. So I'm going to use it up. So anyway... 
I have shown you on previous videos how to do a Skinner Blend plug. And if you don't remember or if you haven't looked at my other videos, there's so many on YouTube. Just, um, just search for Skinner Blend plug. And hopefully you can find some. I, if I can find which videos I've shown the process uh, on in my library, I will link to that. But anyway, we start with a Skinner Blend plug. Now this would have been, I'm thinking it might have been a magenta or maybe a fuchsia to white. I don't have any more fuchsia, so I don't know what to compare it to. This that you see laying here is magenta that I have added just a little pinch of black just to darken a little bit because I'm going to use that to wrap this cane. But um, you start with a Skinner Blend cane uh, plug and it's the shorter the plug the easier it's going to be because we're going to cut this plug but first I want to wrap it. And let me see if this is going to be wide enough. Maybe I need to fold this this way and run it through the pasta machine one time. This is on a number three. Just to make sure it's long enough. I'm going to cut a straight edge. Since my cane is, is pretty straight on this end, and I'm going to cut a straight edge here. I'm going to lay this on the clay. And since I know how long, wide I need it, I'm going to go ahead and trim before I wrap just because it makes it easier. And then just wrap your clay, your plug in a clay. And it doesn't have to be the same color. I just chose this again because I had it. But just use a color that will give it a little bit of highlight. And I just stretched that because I what I did. So let me just pull this extra piece off. But now our Skinner Blend plug is wrapped in a darker pink color. And I'm just trying to flatten the ends a little bit. Now what we're going to do, and the easiest thing to do is to mark it. And you know, if you've done this before and you don't need to mark it, that's fine. But it just makes it easier. If I, where is my, oh, there it is. This is my sharper blade, and it's got clay on it. But we want to cut this in half, and it's easier to mark. like that, just mark it, or use the back side of your blade, which is a little bit wider. Just don't cut yourself. And then mark it this way. Then pick your cane up and follow this line straight down the side and make a mark on the side. And I should have just made it even with this seam, but I didn't. But anyway, just mark this and I'll show you. See we've got four marks going around our cane. Now the reason you put those marks is when you cut it in half, if you're not directly over the cane, you know like, and excuse my hair, but if you're not like directly over the cane, then you can't tell if you're going straight or not. And you probably have tried to slice slices off of a cane and they ended up being really uneven and it's because you weren't directly over and watching. So if you have these little lines on the side, you can follow those lines and know that you're going straight. So I'll just press a little bit on this side and you just keep going back and forth and follow the line. And if you get off of it a little bit, you can come right back. But anyway, so there. This is cut in half. All right, now I'm going to turn it this way. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to follow those lines, put it in my top mark, and then just go a little bit at a time. 
slicing on those marks because those marks are marking the straight line and there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just lay these out like this. Just lay them down. And it doesn't matter what order they're in. But what we're going to do, and again, remember, this, this cane of mine has been sitting for about 12 years. So my, mine will be a little bit stiffer. If you're, and especially if you're using Primo, this will be a lot easier. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my thumbs and I'm going to start pushing up that dark color. Push it up and up and up. And you want to get it as far up the side, you know, up as you can. It doesn't have to go all the way up, but you want to bring it up maybe halfway. And this can vary. You know, you can see this. It's not real straight. It doesn't really matter. Then you're going to turn it over to the other side and you're going to do the same thing. Just pull the dark up. Just roll it with your thumb and your finger. And like I said, mine has taken a little bit more effort because this is old Kato, but it's moving. Don't think it's just because it's firm that it's not going to move. It is moving. Okay, and so now we have one that looks like this. It's like, it's like a mountain with a white cap. And they're not even even. And again, it doesn't matter. And you'll see why when we finish. But we're going to do this on all four. It might be easier for you to leave it on your table, but you don't want to flatten your top tip, and in this case, the white tip. But they're just anything to make it easier to get this dark clay moved up the side. And there we have a second one. And we'll do it to the third one. And you can see it doesn't take long, even with the stiff clay. It doesn't take long. And you don't have to use pinks. You can use any color. I just happen to have this pink blend and one of my subscribers did one of my canes and she said and of course I did it in pink it's my favorite color can you tell and I laughed I said well be be prepared because we're gonna have some more pink I keep saying that my daughter's dog's name is pink and me sitting here talking about pink and saying the, the name she thinks I'm calling her, and she keeps coming in here and looking at me. <laughs> Pink is one of our greyhounds. And she's getting a little old. She'll be 13 next month. And she has a... Um, well, it's there's a name for it, but what it amounts to is her larynx has some paralysis. It's laryngeal paralysis. So when she breathes, it sounds like she's out of breath, but she's really not. That's just what she does, how she breathes. But anyway, so then we're just going to set these side by side. Actually, I'm going to turn it this way so it'll make it easier for me to do what I need to do. And I'm going to move this one down here just because... This one and this one are bigger than the ones in the middle. So I must not have cut it very even. But what we're going to do, maybe because I'll do this this way, I'm going to take two of them and squeeze them together. And I'll take these two and squeeze together. And you're matching up your white at the top. But squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Then we're going to take these. Actually, yeah, it's going to work. I just want to make sure. I probably shouldn't have done it this way, but, you know, me, I'm always breaking the rules. 
but you want to just squeeze these together. And like I said, mine is Kato, and it's been sitting for a long time, so it might take me a little bit more effort than what it takes you if you're using fresh clay, which hopefully you are. If you're just starting with clay, your clay is fresh. But you want to squeeze this together till it's maybe, I don't know. And you notice as you squeeze together, it's coming out this way. But let me cut off these ends that don't have the dark pink on them. And that way I can show you what the inside looks like. See that? And we're going to keep squeezing. You can lay it on its side if you want. And mash it down. Flip it over and mash it down. And see this is beginning to move now. Because I can pull it and it's gonna it's stretching. So you just might want to stretch it out a little bit. But see, there's our end. And what we're gonna do is pull it and stretch it out a little bit. See how flexible this is now? It wouldn't have done this 10 minutes ago. But I love this clay. Have you ever bought a product that was designed by somebody that doesn't use that product? You know, when I was working, we were, it was a sales office. My last position with the company was in a sales office in Florida. And every once in a while, the company would change our software. And they would bring this, you know, they'd bring it in, they'd install it, and we'd go, th go through all these training classes, and then we'd start to use it. And it was the most useless thing that I'd ever seen. And it made our, instead of making our job easier, it made it harder. And we just decided it was obvious that they did not consult the end user before they designed their software. But anyway, what I'm going to do now, I've cut it... Let me measure, because my measuring skills are not the best. That is just about four and a half, so I, let me just cut these ends off, square up the ends, and then that would, will change the measurement some. So now it's just a little over four inches, so I'll just cut it at a little over two inches. And see, we have two of these now, like this. And what we're going to do is put them together. But look at your veins. I think I'm going to put them together this way. See how these veins, this one kind of curves in and this one kind of curves in. I think they look better that way. Because this is going to end up being our, one of our petals. And again, we're going to squeeze them together. And how many times you do this is all, it all depends on the look that you want. I happen to like a lot of veins in my flowers. So I'm going to stretch this out. Roll it a little bit. And just stretch it out a little bit so I can cut it in half again. And it's going to double the number of veins. Now see, you can take this and you can pinch the top, the white part, and make it into a petal. Which would be perfect, But or you can do this. You can put them together again and add a lot of veins to your petal. So let's just do that. And like I said, you can stop anywhere you want. You can keep doing this until you've got very, very fine divisions in your petal. But I think this is going to be enough for me. But again, you need to squeeze it together because you want to make a, just one petal. And as you're squeezing, kind of pull it a little bit. 
so we can stretch it out. Let me see if I can get my camera out without totally destroying everything and see if you can if I can get you a picture of my dogs because this seems like they're both in here because I keep saying pink. I don't come here Daphne come up here in the camera come up here up here all right can you see them this is pink well the one with the dark hair that I'm rubbing it that's Daphne come here pink come here pink go on Daphne come here pink Anyway, I can't take my camera off. But anyway, that's where they are. I just thought I'd show you. You may not even be interested in my dogs, but they're so sweet. Let me see if I can get this back where I can see what I'm doing. Okay. Now I'm going to go back and make this a little longer and squeeze it as we're going. And I'm going to start pinching the top while I'm doing this, I'm going to pinch the top to sort of make it like a triangle, but it's going to be a, like a rounded triangle. And then stretch it out as you're going. You'll eventually want to round these corners on the end. You don't want a square cane. You want it to be round on the bottom. But while you're stretching it and everything, it's a little hard to do that. But just keep pulling and stretching and tugging and stretching. I'm going to try to get this out. Let me stroke a little bit. Stroking, everybody asked about, you know, before when I was showing something I was doing and I did a lot of stroking and pulling. And they said that they had never seen that before. And I noticed I did a lot of it. Well, the friction of your fingers going over these petals helped to stretch it because it's generating friction heat. And uh, so it just helps a little. Your ends, you might have to pull on the bottom a little bit more just because they're going to get a little misshapen. Let's see what we can do. I think I need a bigger, a longer ruler. Got it. Here it is. Let's see what I've got. 10 inches. What is one and a half times six? One and a half would be six and three would be nine inches. Okay, so I can cut this end off and cut this end off. And then cut inch and a half pieces. But you need six. One, two, three, four. And then let me bring the ruler down. Five. Six. Now because I was cutting across on top of my blade, these cuts didn't go all the way through. So I'll go back and cut all the way through on these cuts. And then what, what we'll do is we'll line up three and three. And you can alternate these so that the veins go in different directions or you can leave them in the same 
orientation and they will all go the same way. So I match those three up and they're going to need to be flat so just lay them face down here and then I'll line these three up and I'll lay those down so they can have a flat edge and then I'll put them together this needs to come down just a little bit but there is a flower cane now you can do several things here if you want a center you see here how small the center needs to be so you can still before I mean don't press this together permanently yet but remember I had made some flower centers for the poinsettia or did I get that far in my video anyway I think I will use I keep a little thing here of different centers that I've used for flowers. I'm honestly thinking I'm just going to be very artsy and use this little spiral as a center. But I need to roll it down because it's too big. But I'm using what I have. I'm not making anything new. Well, that's had air in it. Just to show you what happens when you have air in something and you start rolling it, see how the air comes out? It just really kind of crushes your cane. So that's why I'm always saying be, be sure you get all the air out because that can happen. And if it can happen to me, who's done this for almost 20 years, I'm sure it can happen to anybody. I don't claim to be perfect. Still a little bit of air down here in the end. I can feel it. It's, it doesn't feel solid. It feels like, um, I don't know what it feels like, but it's, it's got a different feel. Now I'm getting the air in this end. There's air in the center. But I'm trying to make this narrow I when I was do claying you know a lot with my guild and everything I was using exclusively Kato clay so most of this stuff that I have is Kato I think that might be small enough And then let me put this together again and offset it just a little so there'll be a little bit of curve here for the roundness of this cane. Okay, so now I have a center in my flower. Now, again, we've got choices to make. Let me go to this side. This side is prettier. <laughs> you always have a pretty side and an ugly side. I'll keep the ugly side down. You can, if you want, squeeze this together and make a round cane, a round flower. And let me just push a couple of these together. You'll get like these three lobes are all pushed together but this will lose its definition you'll lose that little bit of a petal shape or you can put little things in here to keep your petals open it depends on what you're going to be using it for if you're going to make a bunch of beads where you just want the flowers on there you, you need to reduce it and you're going to need to um, fill these if you want it to maintain this look. But l just for our time's sake and everything else, let me 
let me just reduce this the way it is and make it into a round cane and you just press and press and as you press down they'll start going together but I'll show you what it looks like round and then the next cane I do I will put filler in between each petal to keep the petals separated and that way you can see the difference. It won't be in this video, it'll be in another video. Let's see, I've got this all together. I can now roll it because it's round. Squeeze from the center. A little bit of the white came through on this. I didn't keep this bottom done. If, if that bothers you, all you need to do is to take a very thin piece of this. And this is on a number three. So I think I will move it down to a number five. Because you want it to be very thin. Because we've worked with this and the pink is pretty thin. And I'll go down to a 7. Oh, and I got the notice today that my Lucy's machine is ready. Alright, this went all the way to the thinnest setting on my pasta machine, which is a number 9. And I'll just make a straight edge and straighten up this and I'll make enough to go across that whole piece there and it's only this long but so you can do this and then just go over the place where the white came through because this at, at this point it's so thin you're not going to know that that piece is there and now when you're rolling it and twisting it and pulling it, that white piece has disappeared and like it, it was here. But that's okay. But anyway, let me just stretch it out a little bit because I want to make a bead for you while, while we're still here. Let me get this all together. Now this clay is conditioned. It's just still firm from being sitting so long. But just cut a piece of the scrap that you cut off and make a little ball. You know, like I say, your Primo will make it much, much easier. But this will be really, really strong when it's baked. But just make a ball, roll both ways, right in the center of your palm. That doesn't look too bad right there, does it? Then we'll take a slice of cane. There's your cane. And we'll take a slice, a thin slice. Actually, I'll take a couple of thin slices. I'll do four just to make sure I've got enough. Whoops! I just cut the end off of that one. But let me show you that because if you if that happens to you, it's not that big a deal. Let's put this. See how I cut the end of that cane off? Put that on first and just fold this down. Then take another one and just butt it up to it and it looks like they're overlapping. See now could you tell that I cut the end off of this piece? It just looks like they're overlapping and you see why I put the darker color around the edge? Because it does give you a divider between the flowers. Otherwise, this would just be a bunch of pink and white stripes. Let 
me see. And I'll probably need at least one more piece. I won't need a whole one. I'll go ahead and put a whole one on there and just spread it out. They're all going to overlap anyway. So now we've got your ball and it's there's going to be a few little spaces like there's a little space but as you roll this to make it round that's going to go away. It's almost gone. And you can nudge a little with your fingers, you know, do what whatever it takes. There's a little hole there, but But there we go. There's a bead with your pink flowers. And you would just take a needle tool. That's a whole one, and this is pretty whole, so I might want it, those to show. So I'll go in from the side. Let's see. I think I'll go in right here. Find a place that you don't want to show or doesn't necessarily have to show. Put your finger on the other end and just twist your needle tool until you just barely feel it. I don't know if you can see or not. It's just barely right there. It just barely came through. But then you pull it out and go in where that little hole is and go through the other way and that way you've got nice nice holes. No raggedy clay sticking out. And there's a bead. You can make all kinds of beads. You can make little beads, big beads. You can make, make them into shapes. You know, there's a lot of use for this. But this is your second flower cane. I've got some other ideas for flower canes, and I'll do those with these other two blends in another video. But for right now, I want to thank you for watching. Hope you can figure this one out, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.